number two is a lot smaller. Okay, so we're going to end the week with a bang, right? And now Betty Jo. It's a joke. It's a joke, my friends. <laughs> and the thing is, once, once you do that, you, then, then you let the the child go do it to someone else, and you say, "Hey, let's go, let's go do this on Dad," you know, and then they'll think that's funny and and everything. It's all good. Okay, so um, tea towels. So Monday we did the gathered tea towel, the no drop gathered tea towel. Tuesday we did the patchwork tea towel. Wednesday you did the apron. Yesterday we did the joy pillow, and today. I have another tea towel idea for you. I've got a new pattern for you as well. And I hope you enjoy it. It's kind of, um, it's a take off of having a no drop tea towel. And we did that on Monday, right? With the, the ties and everything. But this one is a little bit different and it's kind of fun because with this idea, it really lends itself to, um, to uh, like embroidery, embellishing if you want, whatever. So um, are you ready? This is the one I'm gonna share today. Boop, boop, boop. So I'm gonna show you how to make this guy. I've got a pattern for you, like I said, that um, just buttons around your um, oven door. And then I added some pom-pom trim along the bottom and I use glitter applique sheets for the tree. And so this idea is kind of, obviously you can do anything you want, but this one is going to be more of a winter-like uh, tea towel, right? So, and the other fun thing about this is with the pattern, uh, you can actually make two tea towels out of, um, the, the pattern instructions that I'm going to give you today. Okay, you can you can get two out of this. So uh, let's say if you were going to, to do uh, Kimberbell tea towels where there's two tea towels in a package, then you'd actually be able to make four tea towels. So kind of cool. So let's go ahead and head back inside now and go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how this is done, okay? and share with you a few tips along the way uh, that whether you do this tea towel or you do uh, something else that requires some of these same techniques, maybe you'll learn a few tips um, as we go. Okay, so here we are inside. Do, 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 do. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. By the way, there is a shirt there. <laughs> I'm not quite Wonder Woman yet. All right, <laughs> how do we do this? Uh, you, I've got a pattern for you. You're gonna take one tea towel, and oh, the interesting, Kathy says, now that is scary, stripes and, and uh, plaids together. Isn't it cute though? No need to be afraid. There we go, you might be able to see this a little bit better this way. So fun, okay. So, what you're going to do is you need um, a third, like a third yard of fabric, which will give you two, okay, uh, to do the tops. And um, you'll want some shape flex. I like to put shape flex on the back of my pieces because it just adds a little stability, a little more stability to it. So, um, if you do... Um, a lot of you who do embroidery, whether it's by hand or by machine, it is, um, uh, Shapeflex is, is a product we use a lot. It's, it's a fusible woven and it has um, just that little bit of bumpy side. So when you add it to the back of a project, it just adds a little more stability to it without having it be um, really um, stiff, okay? So, um, what you'll do is, and I've already done this, I've added shape flex to the back of my pieces. And you wanna cut two pieces per towel, and we're gonna put right sides together. And then in your pattern that we have for you, okay, you've got um, this part and this part over here. You're gonna cut those out and tape them together. So it looks like this, 
Okay, so this is the pattern that you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, put this down here for you to all see. Hopefully you can see that, oops, okay. All right, so I've got two pieces together, right sides together, like that. Shape flexes on both of them. And I have already taped my pattern together and now I'm going to trace it. Now, this is one of my tips I wanna share with you. In the pattern, it will say, you know, um, use the template to cut out both pieces. But uh, actually, uh, the, this tip I, I prefer when I'm doing stuff like this. How many times have you cut out something, a pattern, and you're trying to put two to be absolutely exact matching and not have anything wiggle on you? Well, this tip I like to do instead, so I'm going to share it with you right now, is I will trace the pattern. Okay, I'm just using a friction pin here. You can use any kind of, um, you could use a pencil even on this, it's not going to show. Or some kind of uh, marking pin. Okay. There we go. So I've traced my pattern onto one side, so you can see that right there. And then rather than cutting it first, what I like to do is I will actually take it to the sewing machine and sew directly on my lines with both of these together. Okay, so let's head over to the sewing machine and do that. There we go. I am using today the Baby Lock Aria, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and get started. I'm gonna back stitch. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me take it back for a minute. I'm gonna start down here because we need to leave the, the bottom open. So I might as well just start there. And that way um, I can do it all in one big, uh, so uh, at one, uh, one long stretch of sewing. I have my automatic pivoting feature engaged in case you're wondering how that is going up, which I love because now I can just turn it so quickly. Okay, and I'm done. This, this is such a quick, fast project for sure. Okay, so now that I've sewn around that entire template and I've left the bottom open. Now what I can do is take my scissors and just cut that out. Maybe I'll put this down here. And now, in, rather than, you're not gonna cut directly on the line, you are cutting a, approximate quarter inch away from the line, okay? Don't worry, um, you know, you don't have to be exact on this. We're just cutting outside. So do you see how this technique for one can really help, um, you know, make it so much easier when you're doing projects like this. I will do this if I'm doing, let's say I'm sewing together like a, a stuffed animal or a baby doll um, or something like that, that I have done. Those are the things that come to my mind right from the very beginning. Uh, and those, those, let's say for example, on the baby doll, and the arms are absolutely, you want them absolutely exact, you know, and there's some curves there and stuff. I will always, always, always trace it onto my project as a, um, of two pieces together already. And then I will sew on the lines and then I cut outside the lines. You're going to have a lot more precision that way. All right. So you don't have to worry about, um, the trying to match up your seams or anything. I'm just going around real quickly and trimming my corners, um, making sure that especially my inside corners, I get kind of nice and close to that so that it reduces the bulk. Okay. And now I will turn it right side out. Okay.
And I wish I had my little RNK turning tool here. I don't know where it is. So I'm going to see how well my bamboo stiletto does. You want to get um, into those corners. Okay. So that you have a nice point at the end. So I'm just pushing out all my seams and um, going around doing that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Pretty good. Not bad. Okay. So that's basically, I mean, look how simple that was, right? And then what you're going to do is with this opening, you will tuck it in like this and you're going to tuck it in about an approximate inch again don't be don't be too worried about having it be exact but an approximate inch is what you're going to tuck that in okay give it a nice good press you can see what's going to happen here later on when we put a buttonhole in there and such but that's the top of your tea towel so this is what it looks like again when it's all done okay and we're, we will actually go back and do a top stitch after this but this is how you you get it started okay so once you have that tucked in the bottom give it a good press and now it's time to take that tea towel and you will cut it in half. So I'm going to grab, oh, now I don't know where my extra tea towel went. Hmm. Okay, that's weird. Help, somebody help. Okay. Well, hmm. Well, I'll have to go over into my office area. Maybe I left it in there. But this is how the tea towels come, right? And like this. So just cut it right in half. And now you're able to get two tea towels out of one, which is pretty cool. All right, let me, let's run over because I can't quite do this demo if I don't have my other tea towel. Mm hmm, 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 hmm. Oh my goodness, I have no idea where it went. That is weird. Somebody's playing a Halloween trick on me, I'm afraid. Did I leave it outside? Please tell me this happens to you guys. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, let me just... I didn't have so much stuff all over the place. I might have to do another tea towel. Hmm. I think somebody took it. <laughs> oh, no, it fell. See, I shouldn't have just assumed that somebody took it. Actually, I was just kidding. It fell on the other side. Here we go. Boop. Here we are. It's right here. Ah, life is good. Okay. So, we've got two tea towels out of one. Let's try this again. So here we go. This is the tea towel cut in half. And the nice thing about tea towels is that you have uh, the edges that are already finished. But if you are cutting it in half, there will be the top edge that is not finished. So what I suggest is that you um, either take it to a serger to finish the, the top, or you could do a zigzag stitch. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now, is I'll just quickly do a zigzag stitch. I'm gonna lengthen that. There we go. It just keeps the raw edge from fraying. Bob and thread is almost empty. Do you see that sad face? Bob and thread is almost empty. If you're like me, I keep trying. I keep saying, no, 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 you're not almost empty. You're just fine. Oh my goodness, sure enough. You know, this would only happen right here at three at three. Yep, the bob and thread is empty. 
<laughs> oh, so fun. So, no big deal. <laughs> I want to, oh, you know, it's just the way life is. All right, <laughs> let's hurry and get this. I don't even have anyone up here today. A lot of people have gone home early today to um, say, Stat, I need a bobbin, Stat. <laughs> <laughs> Dana says it's a full moon tonight. You are getting it early. Oh, so true. Kimberly asks, could you use pinking shears? Yes, absolutely. I love using pinking shears on projects that um, where you have to cut curves because then you don't have to cut curves, right? Uh, you don't have to cut the corners. You just can uh, use those pinking shears and they just go up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's like it's already done. So it's pretty cool. Okay, bobbin is done. Good thing it's quick. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, the full moon is tomorrow night, not tonight. Okay, so I got almost done with the zigzag stitching. Let me finish that up. Oh, except you do need to thread, re-thread it. Wonder Woman Here we go Wonder Woman mm -mm -mm. Okay It helps when your needle is threaded huh. Okay There we go There we have it Okay This is what I want to show <laughs> Okay, I have finished the top edge. Now, what you want to do is you need to gather this so that it fits inside of that little, this little opening. And this little opening is six and a half inches wide, okay? So I'll show you a trick. I think Barb talked about it the other day as well when it comes to uh, doing gathering or ruffles on a sewing machine. But our little trick around here is to set your sewing machine longest length highest tension okay remember that longest length highest tension if you need to write that down jot that down longest length highest tension so i'm going to do that right here and um, oh, i'm going to switch back to a straight stitch here longest length highest tension and what will happen is it will gather your fabric for you, which is pretty nice. I'm also going to make sure that I have um, left my bobbin thread long at the beginning and at the end, okay? This is where you do not want to use your cutting feature. If you, For those of you who have cutting features on your machines, you don't want to use that here. So longest length, highest tension, uh, let's go for it. Okay, I'm not going to use my scissors. Instead, I will lift out my needle and pull this out. Okay, so that way, see how it ruffled like that? But I want it to ruffle some more because I want to... Uh, make this approximately six and a half inches okay so if you pull on your bobbin threads this is why you, you don't want to use your scissor feature you will um, be able to just get this right down there okay there we go these are the this particular tea towel is from the set uh, from Kimberbell with the, that's called warm gray. This is the color warm gray, and this is what I used I used the polka dot tea towel yesterday when we did the joy pillow and Then today I am doing the stripes Okay, so I look at that and I go no, that's probably not six and a half inches. It looks a little bit bigger and um, I can get out a measuring tape or my use my mat to check right and there we go that looks pretty good and let me move my computer here let's see let's see six and a, yeah six and a half what do you know okay 
So at this point, what you'll do is you'll take that opening and you'll just tuck that right in there. Just tuck it inside, uh, going up about, oh, I don't know, about an inch or so, till you feel like it's nice and snug in there. And now what you'll do is you'll go, and I'm not gonna take the time to do this right now, but all you would have to do is you have it in, you make sure it looks good on both sides, okay? And then do a straight uh, top stitch all the way around. And now I'll even go up here, do my top stitch, and all the way around. And then I will go back one more time along the bottom. All of this is in the instructions, so don't you worry. And I will do one more final stitch about a quarter inch of a, away from my the bottom fold just as an extra reinforcement because if you think about it this is going to be tugged on right so just an extra reinforcement i put two lines of stitching and i don't know how well you can see that here but i have two lines of stitching right there but then the rest is my top stitch okay so uh then you need to decide am i going to do a, a button a button closure um, or you could use Velcro. I've seen people where if they don't feel comfortable doing a button, uh, they could, or I should say a buttonhole. I've seen where people will t take a button here, you could put a button here and then just wrap twine around it to secure it. You could use snaps. There's all different ways to do that. So you choose the way that you like the best and don't be scared of buttonholes. They're not that scary at all. And you do them just right on your sewing machine. And mo so many sewing machines out there now have the one-step buttonhole, which makes it even easier. So don't be afraid of buttonholes, but that's how it is. And so see, you can see that that's gonna go around where it hangs down and work perfectly, okay? so. Uh, then I decided to embellish it a little bit more. Now, you could certainly, like if you were going to embellish up here, it might be cute to have an initial right there, a small embroidery design, whatever it might be. But I'm going to embellish down here. And to do that one on our pattern, we just included, this is just such a simple, simple, simple little triangle and square to make a Christmas tree. You could cut this obviously out of any fabric, but I am so in love with um, Kimberbell's glitter applique sheets that I decided to use those. Okay, so I used brown and green. Okay, I don't know where my green went. It probably fell on the floor too, yeah, who knows. So. Uh, the glitter applique sheets and they're very easy to use and they just take the place of if you were doing regular uh, anything that calls for a regular fabric applique uh, do it with uh, glitter sheets and that really is uh, adds a lot of fun to it and sparkle and then I also uh, just trimmed it up with the Kimberbell pom-poms the white pom-poms she also has fringe in here so you know, if you're going to make a whole bunch of these, don't let these go to waste. Go ahead and use the fringe on some of your tea towels as well. And that was really easy to put on. I do want to show you um, just a, a little tip here when doing that. Patricia asked, can you wash the glitter sheets? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Let's see if we can get up clo as close as possible. When I put on a uh, pom-pom trim on anything, I always use a stiletto to help me do that, okay? So as you're sewing, you're going to be able to, I don't like to use pins because it just seems like a hassle. So use your stiletto, okay, to just guide your fabric. And if something's sticking out, like I don't want that trim to stick out, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to give a little tap, tap, tap as I sew and tap, tap, tap as I sew. And now look at that. You, you see a really nice clean um, seam of the pom-pom trim without getting your fingers in the way. That's why we use stilettos. All right, that's important. Uh, glitter sheet applique is really easy to do. And I'll just show you, let's see. I don't, okay, I will go ahead. I've got some little scraps here. So I'll bring this down here. Glitter sheet applique, the way it comes is it does have a protective 
plastic coating on the front okay and so I like to remove that first before I I sew it on see how it just cut, peels off like that the nice thing about glitter applique is it leaves no glitter don't worry the glitter will not come off I promise you and I'm just going to for kicks and giggles I'll just make it my own little triangle here because I'm not going to take the time to to uh, do the pattern okay so I have a triangle tree I have my my little um, my piece of brown for the trunk and I can take that off as well okay. and I'm just going to peel those off I actually like to peel them off um, some people don't peel them off I just personal preference I peel them off before I add it to my project okay and then let's see we'll go Let's come over here to the ironing board. Ironing station, I'm gonna get down on the ground here. <laughs> so, oh, so you can see, here we go. And I'm just gonna take this and place it exactly where I want it to be and my little trunk. And this one's a lot smaller than what's in your pattern. There's actually a little bit bigger one in your pattern. And I'll take a, you could use either a pressing cloth or I'm just going to take an extra piece of fabric that I have here and just place it over top and then take my iron and hold it down for just a few seconds, okay? The other thing about glitter applique is you can sew through it. So if you wanted to make sure that glitter applique was just nice and firm on on your project and that it wasn't going to come undone um, you could um, sew around it through your with your regular needle it's not going to hurt it you can embroider with uh, glitter applique and you know what you certainly don't even have to do either you can leave it as is we've done these on t-shirts before and washed the t-shirts and have had no problems with the glitter applique coming up okay so anyway um i hope you were able to learn some new things about um with some of the techniques i shared with you today so one more time for those who might have been late here we go here it is the pom-pom trim the glitter applique sheets the towels and the pattern so there you have it. Do you like it? All right. I'm going to go back outside. It is hot in here. My goodness. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's take a look. Um, yes, the glitter sheets are washable. Yep. No problem. We wash them all the time. All the time. Uh, let's see. Yay, I'm so glad you enjoyed this week with the tea towels. I, I've enjoyed it too. I've had a lot of fun with uh, trying to come up with different themes for every day. And uh, it's been fun. We'll have to do it again of different themes. I'm not sure as to any hints for next week, Deborah. <laughs> I'm not that far yet. <laughs> so I'll be thinking about that uh, this weekend for sure.